Well, hello, hello, hello. We are about to get ready for fashionably dating Makara. Stay tuned. I'm very excited. And all right, make sure you mark. The, make sure you come on this live. All right. Let's try this again. Because Instagram be acting all the way up. All right. We got it. Is it going? Yes. I think we're here. Like I All right. I think we did it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So like Take two. Take two. We got that. We got that. Right, right. So welcome, 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 welcome to Fashionly Dating Makara. Well, I'm your host, Makara Reed, and this is a live show where I get to know the person behind the shallow looks, and the person is the designer. So today, on my very first one, we have the designer Tijan Lays. Woo! Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know what? I'm gonna tell you this little story. So my team, my one of my writers was looking up something. I forgot what we were working on. I'm working on so many stuff. But she was just like, Is this your work? And I'm like, Yeah. She was just like, Why you stop doing this? And I'm <laughs> like, girl, because blocking became too much. Blocking became so much. And then I just wanted to just hone in on styling or whatever. So I just I just abruptly stopped. So she was just like, why don't you pick this back up but just do like lives instead of just blocks? And I was just like, maybe I should. Just let me let me get some of my projects out the way and then I'm gonna come back. And I was just like, let me and that's all your event. And I was like, oh let me come. Let me come. Because I'm up and down 95 all this summer. So <laughs> yes that's my quick little story well i'm glad that you're back into it i tell everyone like sometimes you have to take like a break from everything um yes. and just you know get back into it so i'm glad that you were able to do that and i want to tell everyone thank you like the flexibility that you had today like i was like okay listen i gotta get to a meeting at four i've got to be here at three we gotta get this done so i am working remote from washington dc so if you hear all the street sounds it's the beautiful city of the DMV. girl i'm in new york but there so. we go there we it's go. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So, a lot of people get into fashion. They have different ways, different stories that they introduced. How did you get into fashion? Like, how were you introduced to fashion? Yeah. I think uh, for me, it was more internal. I was, I, you know, had a need, like most things. It's like need based. You need to fulfill that. Um, I had two children, and I was like, I want to have amazing pieces. I want to be able to do my thing. I want to be able to look beautiful, feel feel beautiful. And with that, it was being able to say, okay, I want to have nice designer pieces. But, you know, young, two children, you couldn't afford it. So you're like, okay, what do I do now? I, I think I went to, like, Walmart, bought, like, a cheap machine, and I was like, okay, I'm going to, like, start making my stuff. And um, I, I did, and from there, it kind of just all spiraled into what you see from Charleston Fashion Week to Charlotte Fashion Week. Now we'll be going to New York Fashion Week in September. And, you know, it's going to be – it's it's been an amazing journey, and I think, like, little by little you learn things. But for me, it's been very much um, – you know, it's been unique to myself. It was me just trying to fulfill a need that I had, which was to have – great clothing on a good budget oh, right. <laughs> that, that's a lot it's a, a, a lot of people so don't even feel the way you said you were going to you're you're going to be in dc fashion week yes i'll be doing well i'll be doing a show in dc uh -huh. i'm going to be doing new york fashion week we're going to be doing a show in texas a show in austin and then we're looking to go to miami so we'll see how that goes i'll um, see you in dc because i just got my credentials so <laughs> The girl, the girl. I'll be attending. If I'm not showing, I'll okay. be attending and supporting all the local designers, of course. Okay, okay. So, yeah, so back at it. All right, so when you got into fashion and you got very serious, what were, like, your expectations when you entered the fashion, the business of fashion? I think I really didn't have any expectations. Being a self-taught designer, you're kind of like, okay, listen, this is your goal. My goal is to not fail. My goal is to be able to make the design world work for me, whether it's being able to learn how to do scaling or tech packs or, you know, just creating a collection overall. It was like, hey, it's not going to be all 
rainbows and sunshine and, you know, just right. happy, smiley faces. It's going to be some nights where it's two o'clock in the morning and you're stressed out and you're crying. Um, so for me, I didn't want to set expectations on myself because it was just me doing it. So it was like, listen, Tyson, you got to work and, you, you know, it's, it's not going to be easy. So I don't think I necessarily had expectations. I think it was, it's all been, and even to this day, it's been a learning process and, you know, building relationships along the way and being able to take those relationships and making those, um, you know, work for the business. Right. Did you? You had like the same feeling as well when you were like making your your garments because I know some designers have so much emotions that they put into it. They're like very sensitive about their <laughs> their their baby. <laughs> it is our baby. It's like we made this from nothing from right. fabric. Um, <laughs> I um no, I'm not that kind of designer. For me, I think okay. it's more. Uh, I enjoy the creative process. Like, I don't like to sketch out designs prior to making them. So that's why it's been so hard to create, like, content leading up to this new collection mm -hmm. because it's, like, you really don't know what it's going to look like until you start to work and feel, with, feel the fabric and feel, you know, the various right. movement pieces that you want to create. And so for me, um, I think that I'm not sensitive about it. But, like, once it's done, I'm, like, okay, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't, like it's all good you know like this is my baby um so I, I think that for me i just really enjoy the creative process and i think at the end of the day it's really about being able to put that product out there and have those that actually like fill you and you know right. are um just all about what you're trying to put out there to be able to bring them part of your community like that's mm -hmm. like the number one thing <laughs> it's always interesting working with like designers because each of you guys have your own system like everyone does not start like the same way some people sketch some people just i need to go to a fabric store or i need to go look at some buildings some architecture or i need to like paint something like it's just different background is just very fascinating and i'm just like we need to put this in like a campaign like when it's like done to go into like the marketing and you need to pitch it out to people it's just fascinating how like some designers just go about certain things yeah. I like I, I am very inspired by those designers who are like, oh, I can go and look at buildings or go to a museum and mm -hmm. find like all this inspo. For me, it's like, well, what do I want to wear? Like, how do I want to? Right. <laughs> like how do I want to feel like okay I have these events coming up and this is kind of the vibe that I want to command in the room for me it's really about that self piece to be able to say okay I want to be able to wear my stuff number one I want to be able to look good and feel good and then be able to put it out there and whoever you know supports it supports it and whoever doesn't doesn't like mm -hmm. I am very much like let's create this let's like okay I want a bad suit I don't have one I want it in white okay great now I'm going okay so I have this white I now want to create a white gown and I know I want volume you know like right. it's just kind of it's really about how I'm feeling in the moment but then it's also about like my life experiences like recently I've had the opportunity um, to be able to work with various individuals in the in the DMV whether it be like local artists mm -hmm. or um, other creatives and then I've been just I've had the ability to be immersed in uh, just diversity in the space of um, like the LGBT community and kind of doing outreach right. in that space and um, support in that space. And so just meeting individuals, I think has also inspired me and just seeing what they're into and you know, what their needs are. Um, so for me, I think that's my creative process, but I'm so inspired by those who are like, I see this building and it has 19 windows. Now I want to create a dress that has 19 openings with, you know, a split back and, you know, measures 19 feet. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is great. <laughs> But you're like, wear it? like you know like can i wear it <laughs> right you're like how did you find inspiration for that but yeah it's just very fascinating just like just being around you guys just let you guys work and i'm just like oh okay this this is how they get motivated okay this is interesting interesting so you start off with the fabric first for me it's or colors for me it's yes yeah, the fabric fabric of the colors i'm very much a fabric person i love textures you all know like between floral and sequin and lace it just makes my heart pitter patter so when i <laughs> able to, to either create something um in-house whether it's a textile or find a textile that's existing whether you know but i try to uh, recently we've been pivoting towards like more sustainable products i'm um, just making sure that like it, it works in that space for me that's like that's the heart thread right there i'm like okay great what do i want to make this look like you know like how do i want to change this from being this fabric to being this amazing gown or this amazing suit okay 
Very cool. So I met you when you just won the 2018 Charleston um, competition. Right. So what has life been like afterwards? Oh my goodness. Life has been good. It's been, of course, ups and downs because, of course, being a small business, being woman-owned, having to work off a certain set of funds and scaling right. and things of that sort and just learning process it's been you know ups and downs but for the most part the charleston fashion week platform winning that um opportunity or having that opportunity has definitely i think thrusted my business um i was able after charleston fashion week to sit down and have lunch with firm malice which i'm like what like me like I get to go and have like okay great you know and from there which is really honest conversations and one thing that I've you know that sticks with me to this day firms like oh Tyron don't quit your day job like you're an amazing designer but fashion is so expensive and the way in which things are ever changing you always have to you know you always have to ensure that you have the financial backing behind you and with that stated you're a smart girl and I tell you not to quit your day job and I'm like okay great okay that makes sense right. and then it's more so um, having things like coming from Charleston Fashion Week and being able to do Philly Fashion Week and being invited to New York Fashion Week these have all been opportunities I think because Charleston Fashion Week opened up the brand awareness mm -hmm. to, for people to know that Tyson and Lace was out there you know or is out there um, so I think that many opportunities have come from that I still get people to the same like oh you won I'm like oh yeah I did Okay, great. You know, like, and, and just building, you know, the relationship with Charleston Fashion Week. They've invited me back several times, and it's been nothing but love. So, right. um, yeah, it's 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 definitely been a you know a great uh, tool to have in my toolbox for design. Would you advise any up and coming fashion designer to participate in the Charleston? Okay, I, there's. There's no reason not to. The amount, like I said, the resources, I think I came out that year and we had like a 12-month um, a mentorship with marketing and understanding like how, uh, at that time, like how social media works and how it was to grow your business with that space. And then also being able to have like the video assets and the runway photos. Like these are key things that like mm -hmm. designers pay so much for. And Charles actually, yeah, was able to just give that, you know, to you as part of your package of participation, not just to win, but participation. So right. I say that if you can get in, if you, you know, do the work, it, it'll show up and, and you'll be, you'll be very excited from what you're able to yield from that opportunity. Yeah, there's a lot of people who are just so gun ho on just going to New York Fashion Week or Paris, like the big five. And I'm just like, you know, there's so much more opportunities, especially with this landscape of digital media, you just never know like who can just make your your brand, you know, the next big thing or someone that can provide you resources or give you visibility. You just never know. So I thought that was an important question to ask. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I think even now in today's market, like fashion market, that social media is the driver. Like, I don't care what, what fashion week you do. You know, I right. think it's more so for the designer to say internally, like, oh, I did Paris and I did New York and, you know, I did, you know, whatever fashion week you're trying to do. But I think at the end of the end of the day, being able to reach your audience through social media, being able to show right. your pieces the way that you want to show it, I think is like the driving factor. So I say, number one, invest in your marketing, invest in social media, invest in a strategic plan for you to grow your business over, you know, you know, 12 to three to five years. Um, Right. Or months to three to five years and then from there you'll see that that is really the driver you know it, it's not about a fashion week it's really about you being able to reach the audience that you're trying to reach to be able to grow the financial piece to be able to scale your business correctly to be able to have opportunities and things of that sort very important they do not it's, it's a lot of people who just be like i gotta make i gotta make this the next big thing and i'm just like well what about marketing yeah. who's gonna buy this garment like you're making you're putting all this money and sweat equity in into everything and right. you don't even know who your customer is right. like how are you pitching it like how are you marketing it what do you like you're just gonna pop up and it's just it's, it's a lot girl it is it is <laughs> it, <Definitely. laughs> it is a lot but child i'm not a designer <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah, you never know. You're in fashion. You might be like, okay, time to start my own collection. I'm like, okay, girl, do it. <laughs> I do better with like reworking, like upcycling. Right. But the whole cutting and measurements, no, girl. <laughs> I like to just throw stuff together and make things work visually. Yes, that is my area. 
but <laughs> so what would you say your core values are as a designer uh, my core values it's that's a big question you know i think it mm -hmm. also drives down to the person mm -hmm. i think number mm -hmm. one is to ensure that i am myself at all times that i'm not trying to be like another designer or i'm not trying to fulfill a certain audience's needs at the end of the day taijan has to be happy with the product that she's putting out with the collection right. she to show the world and for me i think that is number one ensuring that i'm true to myself and that you know i'm putting out something that is uh you know now i'm really big into the sustainability like we're working on trying to find a sustainable sequin we work mm -hmm. we're working with various vendors so that's taking a bit of strategy i mean it's not a really big market yet but hopefully right. it will be um choosing laces that are um recycled you know recycled laces that uh have been something before and are now what they are now um so for me like things like that are really big just ensuring that like i'm happy with what i'm putting out there that it represents me as a person and it represents me as a designer um and that i'm ensuring that my footprint is not uh being you know fashion's fashion's hard when it comes to the planet so <laughs> making sure that i'm doing my due diligence to have um you know opportunities to integrate that sustainability what made you kind of just pivot to like sustainability everyone uses the word so i just want to like understand what made you to kind of like pivot into that direction yeah. more i mean honestly i i'm in a space now where i want things to be um everlasting like i want the best world for my children for my grandchildren for everyone <laughs> i mean <laughs> right now i'm where i'm in dc and it's 100 degrees and it's been 100 degrees for like the past week and it's like global warming is real like you know these effects that that are you know taking place on our planet like it's it's real so for me if i want to continue living in this space of design and fashion i have um a certain amount of responsibility to say like how can i positively you know impact that um mm -hmm. so i think for me like that is where it happened we started about three years ago when i realized you know especially because you make these collections and you when you make these collections you're like okay wonderful once the collection is done you can put it in your closet but it's still you know it's still it's it's still uh, consuming a certain amount of footprint that is not sustainable like you know if this were to be discarded it's not going to be biodegradable like it's going to be there a hundred years from now right. so looking right. looking at things like that are just like wow like that's a big impact and that's one piece and then like this one dress that's made up of you know 10,000 pieces of sequin mm -hmm. like then how does that affect the environment so just kind of thinking beyond Tiger and lace and the brand but actually like how does it impact you know me how does it impact my family how does it impact the world how does it impact you know everyone that's encompassed in that and then for years to come I you know I want to have a a legacy that's not where you know everything that she makes is a harm to the world <laughs> right in that space so for me that was it was it's been really important to try to, to reshape um you know my love for fashion but also meet meet it with sustainability okay i want to say that because i just the word just drives me crazy because everyone <laughs> talks about it and they're just like we gotta save the world we gotta save the world and i'm just like i mean yes we have to save the world but like what is like your personal reason like i feel like a lot of people are just echo chambers but I um i feel yeah. like it's very important because it just harms our skin yeah it harms our skin it's very like plasticky and also we just waste so much not waste as in like garbage but like you're wasting your money you're wasting your time the amount of washes you have with this type of cheap material you're only getting like one or two or maybe three type three washes with it and then you're throwing it away and you're like man i really like that you know that item i have to go find something else that's suitable for it so i just feel like it's just time consuming for me so i kind of just started like grazing through all of my clothes personally like during the pandemic it kind of just um yeah, I don't want to say sustainable. Yeah, I don't want to say the word because everyone says it. But yeah, I definitely been like doing a purge and just throwing away and not shopping at like those cheap stores and really just investing in quality pieces that actually last. Yeah, I definitely think that that is that is important. And I think, you know, no matter where where you shop, just understanding like 
that trends and fashion are, you know, something that you decide to be part of, but being able to have things that you feel are going to be everlasting you, you know, is very important. So no matter, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't really have preferences for where people, you know, shine right. and all that good jazz, but I just think it's just understanding, like, people are like, oh, this is going to be out of, no, it's only out of fashion because you don't want to wear it anymore. Or you don't like the way right. it anymore. So, like, just ensuring that when you're purchasing pieces that you feel like this is you at your core and it's not just because you feel like everyone else has a tennis skirt, so let me join the tennis skirt bandwagon. You know, like, it's, it's, oh, it's that's, that's the case. That's the case. <laughs> yes, the, the copycatters that yes, I would like so. to call them. Yeah. Wow. That is not me. <laughs> So what would you say your what would you say your standards are for your brands for your when, when you're making your garments? Got it. Um, yeah, I think my standards are ensuring that there's a a level of quality there. We want to ensure that when it comes to things from the stitch to the fabric selection to the cut of the fabric to the way in which it fits the the, the client um, are all at a level that fits my needs you know like i'm okay. very picky if anyone knows me i'm like it has like i'm a perfectionist like we have it has to be a certain way um and i think that that for me is is where like the minimum level is like it needs to be okay i i like it great okay it's good for the it's great for the customer um i think for me yeah it's it's everything that that, that makes up the garment even from just the overall consultation process for mm-hmm. me the standards are that like it needs to be a certain level of customer service a certain level of uh you know understanding the client's needs to ensure that what we're producing for them is really going to meet their needs and we're not just trying to say oh we want you to have a ties and lace piece like no you know, I've gotten to a space where I used to take every client that I can get. And now I'm like, no, I don't, I don't do that anymore. Now it's like, okay, so you would like me to produce something for you. Why? How can, you know, how can we see eye to eye to make things, you know, as fluid as possible for whatever it is you're trying to achieve, whether it's a wedding gown or a sweet 16 gown or, you know, something from the runway that you've seen. So, um, yeah. So I think the standards for me are, you know, exist in all platforms, whether it be the customer space from the one-on-one environment to, um, you know, just the overall production piece. Um, And then even after I've gotten to this space now where we are, like I said, sustainability, where some of my clients were just like, oh, I'm not going to wear this again. And I'm like, okay, well, it's just (laughs) in your closet. And she's like, yeah, girl, no matter. Okay. Let's figure out a way to like make this something. So you in my upcoming show, there's a few pieces that I've taken and I've we've created art with it. And it's just, you know, ways to ensure that like everything is a certain level, a certain expectation of uh quality and greatness, and then ensuring that it's gonna be something that you're gonna have forever. No matter what form it is, if it's a garment or if it's a piece of art. That's a good way to think. Yeah. But you're all about longevity. Yeah, I would say. Yes. Okay. You mentioned collections. So I want to see what would you say your similarities are with your last collection and the upcoming one? Ooh, are there similarities? I think is the question. I think yes. it's similarities because it's Taish on Lace. <laughs> I mean, like, can I just throw that in there? Like, there's like an underlining uh, sense of sex appeal and femi- like femininity in it that feels very much Tyjron Lace. But the color palette, like it's no red. Like everyone's like, it's no red. I'm like, no, it's no red. Is red it's your no favorite red. color? Red, well, red is one of my, like okay. I enjoy red. I enjoy red. Um, so for me, I went back to the black and white and it has some undertones of neutrals in it. But um, yeah, there's none of that. It's very big this time around. I think the, cl- the previous collection that I produced um, was a bit, bit more slimming, more fitting for the summer months. Um, but this one is is very big. That's all I can okay. say. <laughs> all right. And yeah. I was going to say, so what would, what would be the difference? The difference is the silhouettes. The silhouettes are different. Um, the fabric selection is different. There's not much sequin in this collection, okay. um, which goes back to the sustainability piece, um, mm-hmm. dealing with texture. But there's lots of texture. Everything from using poplin to uh, 4D lace to um, uh, what do you call it? 40 cut cutouts are really big. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be good. 
Well, I'll be, I will be there to check it out. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yes. Yes. So since you're not in your studio, which is okay, you had an unexpected, I wanted to get into some physical attraction. So we want to do another question. Okay. So when you design your dress, you kind of answered it before. Um, what, what type of woman do you envision when you are making like a garment or the collection? I will, we can say the collection that that's going to be releasing on August. Yeah. In August. Like, I feel like the perfect woman for this collection is like a Angelina Jolie, like the, <laughs> the Vogue vibes in this collection. I mean, I did, uh -huh. you know, I, I definitely went above and beyond when it came to ensuring that the fabric selection was just out of this world, that there's um, a lot of uh, variations with the shapes and things of that sort. So I think the perfect woman to wear this i think would be like an angelina jolie it's kind of like badass slash soft <laughs> okay you know, we got short um, are they long dresses short there, dresses uh, it's a it's a variety there's some okay. suits there's uh there's more gowns in this collection than normal um okay but yeah okay it should be very interesting i i will definitely be there for you guys if you are not going to be there i will be there doing my little live stream i got two phones <laughs> i'm mean, like i'm here i am here so we're gonna do our nice little current event topic let's see okay. what's trending oh, let's oh, see what's trending right now okay let me go on twitter oh okay chloe bailey Oh, and whoever whoever's in the chat, we want we want we want to tap into Helen. Helen, give me a a, a love language. If if you give pick of one of the five love languages, so this is gonna be my nice little question. Do you know the uh, love languages? Because some people don't be knowing. Like gifts, gifts. Of, okay, oh, okay. gifts. Okay, gifts. Gifts, gifts of affirm gifts. affirmation. So if, you, so if you had to dress Chloe Bailey based on her love language, her, based off her love language, which is gifting, okay. how would you dress her? Oh my goodness. So I feel like gifting is uh, important in the love language and i think that when it comes to gifting people think like lavish things so i would right. more so pull uh one of the pieces that has like a faux feather um vibe to it it is a gown but it has a nice little cape to it i think putting um chloe in something that's more light so more of one of the neutral browns would be really pretty against her skin tone um and it's fitted in the hip i think that chloe has an amazing shape so oh, yes. you know we got to compliment this um, so putting like, putting her in one of the luxurious gowns that have more of the 40 feathering to it um, that is curvaceous and will fit her body. A cape, depending upon like where she's going. If it's like New York nightlife, capes are always fun. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's what I would do. I want to throw in a bonus one. Okay. What about her sister Haley? How how do you pronounce her name? Haley or Holly? Uh, maybe Haley. I think I'm not sure. Oh we just know we know what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um I I kinda you know, I don't like the fact that the way that they dress them totally opposite. I think mm -hmm. that I would want to dress Haley in a more complimentary piece to her sister. I would still keep it form fitting, but I think I would do a drop bust on her mm -hmm. just because she has an amazing um, jawline. She has an amazing collar line. You know, we saw from the Little Mermaid, like girlfriend, you know, she's beautiful. Um, so with that stated, I think that I would do something that shows more so a dropped collar and then a drop back. Like I would totally show off her shape um, and then put her in similar fabric. Okay, so you would dress them alike. I would. I would. Um, because I think naturally their personas and then just their overall uh, shapes will will transform the gowns and make them look totally different than, you know, what we're just seeing face value. I think Holly's shape is a little bit more pronounced because she's a mom and she has... I don't know. I'm just like, oh, look at this volume she got going on. Come right. on, new mom body. Right. right. It still awesome. look good, but it's like, okay, she's a little, just a little hint Her. of curls. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, girl, get it, get it. Mm -hmm. I agree. 
All right. This was fun. Definitely. This was good Definitely. to actually actually see you because before we was blogging, <laughs> before I was blogging, no, we had you on the phone. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, but phone. we're still good I'll... now to put eye, you know, eyes on each other. So mm -hmm. I'm excited now to see you at the show. I mean, I think this is probably going to be the most lavish curated show that I've put together. Um, oh, so I'm very, so I'm very excited about this. The Media Prince is going to do a Q&A with the designers, including myself, um, at the beginning of the show. Then we'll go into like a more like happy hour mingling. Um, with Layla Hart, she's going to be uh, doing that piece, and then it'll go into the runway show. So, I mean, it's it's going to be a big feat, but I'm very excited for it. Yes, yes, I'm definitely going to be there. So yes, hi John Lace. You have fashionably dated moi, Makara. Thank you. And if you. And if you haven't seen the whole thing, or if you missed it, you want to rewatch it, this will be up on my YouTube channel. Instagram, do not be liking me, girl. So we won't, we, Instagram, I, I like that with most people, on, but we love it. We love it. We will catch it on YouTube. Mm. But anyway, would you like to share anything? Let the people know anything uh, well i just wanted to thank you all for tuning in i can't wait for everyone to attend the show of course i'm in dc this craziness happening catch me catch me out on tizerlace.net and i look forward to connecting in the future yes definitely go check out her work if you haven't already go to her ig the post is tagged with her name and if you go on my profile and also if you want to, if you're a designer if you know a designer and you think you could fashionly say me? Come on, come on down. Hit the tap the link in the description, and I'm a, I want to get to know some new designers because there's some amazing people out there. I like having conversations. And what else? Am I missing anything else? Oh, also the audio version will be on the podcast as well on Apple and Spotify. Well. I enjoyed and stay tuned because I will be having another designer next week. Stay tuned. And I will be at that show. I purchased my ticket already. I don't know if you saw my name, but I'm a I found it. I found it. I was like, oh, if not, oh all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm in there. I don't know if I'm driving <laughs> or taking the train, but I'm I'm in there. Nice. But yes, thank you guys for tuning in. If you want to watch, rewatch it again, it's gonna be on YouTube. And thanks so much again. Thank you. Thank I'll you. See you Until on the next 22nd, girl. See you on the 22nd. Yes, I'll see you on the 22nd and again for DC Fashion Week because my there prediction go. is valid, okay? <laughs> All right. See you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.